Hey everybody, welcome to another Flow Presents. I'm excited to carry the conversation forward with um, some gentlemen that I am excited to have this conversation with. If you watched us last week, you know we talked about who has her back. Um, our Black women shared their experiences as Black women in this current climate, speaking to how they see um, the community as a support or lack thereof. And to be quite frank, I feel like Black men were called out. And I think it's time that we had a conversation, gentlemen, um, about accountability and how we see our women. So I want to begin with reading um, something that was kind of a shared thought from last week. Uh, and these were some things that were on Facebook. And so I wanna read these comments to you. And I actually wanna give you each about two minutes to share your thoughts before we enter into um, our conversation in more in depth. So here it is. I asked the question on Facebook, how do you think men see you? And these are some of the answers that were received all by women, right? The question, how do you think men see you? Uh, some women said intense. Another said thighs and ass, forgive me for the language. Um, overly emotional, incapable to rationalize or express thought. Uh, something to dominate and subjugate. Like a piece of meat they want to devour. Uh, depends, one uh, lady said, one woman said, on when they see me, um, either casual or non-casual events dictate how she is viewed. Um, another woman said, mean, funny acting or emotional, misunderstood. Essentially someone who wants to have their needs met without considering mine. Uh, only good for one thing. And the implicit on um, the, the uh, what was implied there was sex apparently. Another woman said a queen, they, uh, an answer was an accessory and uh, another thought was intimidating. So to you gentlemen, hearing that, that is how women believe men see them. I'd like to give you 20 minutes to kind of tell me, just hearing that, what comes up for you? And I'm sorry, 20 minutes, two minutes, please, two minutes. I wanna give each of you about two minutes to um, share with us what comes up for you? Uh, let's start off, I'm gonna go right in order here. You're the first one here, so two minutes on the clock. What comes up for you uh, hearing that? Um, I think the first thing that comes up is, is uh, maturity. Um, I think uh, a lot of times uh, there's a lot that we're socialized as men to think um, and to act in a certain way, um, whether it's um, in private or in public or both. And I think that over time, when a man starts to understand his position and power in the world, as well as the position and power of a woman, um, and respect that and respect how God made us, that type of thinking tends to fall away. Um, and it, you can see that in multiple cultures, so. I appreciate it. Thank you for sharing that with us. I'm gonna go right down to my man Thade. Uh, how did that hit you? Uh, that was that was a lot and almost expected from our our female women and black women in general. Um, those feelings are legit. Um, I think a lot of times as men, we do objectify women and we do see them as something that can be either used for our own gain or our own pleasure. But um, I think for for myself that would not be the case um yeah appreciate you sharing avery uh when i read that what came up for you oh i think at first it's just it's just sad you know i, I think um it there's there's a lot of pain i think it just i i, I want to kind of say that it's um misunderstood and these are all misunderstandings and um, maybe there's a misrepresentation, but you know, I won't, I won't say that. I don't think that, but I do think it's really sad that, um, you know, especially you said that this was comments on Facebook. Um, if there's so many women who, who feel as if um, this is how men views them, I think that it's, it's just, it's really sad and disappointing. Um, someone said this expect, they, that they expected something like that. I don't think that that was my expectation. Um, but I do think that, you know, as guys, um, we, we have to do a better job. If these are like true, true, like honest feelings of like, 
how women feel when men look at them dead mm-hmm. and we're we're doing we're not doing the right thing so i mean it, it bothers me because i i um you know i don't think that that's like what i see um when i look at women so just be you know yeah so it just bothers me that that's that's a, a thought um or that's like just some of the thoughts that have been shared so yeah it just bothers me i think um dylan stepped out i know he'll be right back in so i'm going to carry this conversation forward until he does um, starting with you, Avery, you said it actually surprises you. It shocks you. Um, where uh, fellow panelist Thade was like, it, it actually doesn't surprise him to shock him. So let me ask you this. Let me ask you this question here. Sure. Um, how do you view women? Um, I don't, how, okay, let's see. Um, I don't know. I, I think I come from a very loving place, you know. Um, I, you know, like I said in, on, in prior discussions, I got a mom. You know, she's a woman. I love her. I got sisters. You know, I got a grandmother. I was raised mostly in a household full of women. So, um, you know, my experience and then just growing up in school, I've had women teach me throughout my education all the way even up to university. It's been mostly women. So I've also I've always had just like love and respect for women. So um, I think yeah, I, I, I just, I view them in, in in a very different light. You know, I don't always, now, now don't get me wrong. I'm not, you know, if I'm attracted to a woman, of course, we're looking at, you know, body parts and, and appearance and stuff like that. But this is, I'm not looking at women as like, these are the only things that they can do for me. I only see, what does somebody say? Thighs and ass or like, that's not my, the first thought that comes to my, my mind when I um, when I think about women. Thanks for sharing. I actually want to make sure we give Dylan a chance to respond to that first question. Dylan, if you heard the reading um, of thoughts about how women, um, you said you want me to run it back again? Okay, thanks. I will share that with you. So uh, so these are some of the things that women said they believe men view them. Intense, thighs and ass, overly emotional, incapable to rationalize or express thought, something to dominate and subjugate, like a piece of meat they want to devour, Depends, one woman said, on when they saw me, whether I was in casual or non-casual dress or at an event. Um, Mean, funny acting or emotional, misunderstood, essentially as someone um, who can fill their needs without having their needs met in return. Uh, Only good for one thing, and they were implying sex, as a queen, another woman said, as an accessory and intimidating. So Dylan, hearing that, what comes up for you? I'm going to be completely honest. It, uh, some of them were pretty derogatory. So it sounds like somebody that had some personal issues um, with someone to work out, honestly. But I will say a lot of times I I can see, you know, where that type of preference would come from. Mm-hmm. Um, because as guys, people, you know, see us as, you know, the hunters. Like we're the ones who are always relentless in our chase, our pursuit of the woman we're interested in, right? Um, And honestly, it's a numbers game for a lot of guys, you know? So a lot of guys will go out there and try to talk to as many women as they can in order to, you know, finally get a yes or to finally find the one for them or whatever reason they may have for it. Um, You know, but when when, when you start saying things like piece of meat and this, that, and the fourth, I think that has to do with the over-sexualization of women you know, and just not just the media, Hollywood all over, um, because the first thing that comes to mind if you were to see a naked woman on TV is, OK, sex. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the first thing that you think of. And it honestly shouldn't be because the body is a work of art from God. Honestly, it's a temple, you know, and it shouldn't be the first thing we see when we see, a, a, you know, any type of female genitalia, genitalia um, shouldn't be okay sex 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 it should be okay well no she's she's a woman she has so many other character traits and stuff like that i appreciate you sharing that perspective um dylan because i think you actually uh, support the feeling i'm getting from you is also a sense of shock as though um how can women think this about men i think you oh, i also heard you use the term uh some of these women may have a, a personal issue and i think that actually contrasts something that thought and pierre said as they aren't shocked. Um, I think Pierre actually used the word maturity. So I'd actually like to bounce to you. Um, let me go to you, Pierre, first. Um, tell me, do you think there's validity in what, um, in the shock, right, that Dylan and Avery have 
in this? Like, it, is it because um, women potentially are too emotional? Um, or is there something to be said? Do men need to look at um, what these women, just as a small sample size, are saying about how they feel men view them? Hopefully I was clear with that, Pierre. You know what? I realize he hasn't blinked and moved for a long time. So I think his screen is frozen. All right, we're gonna go to you, Thade. <laughs> um, same question to you, if you could, please. Um, <clears throat> I feel I, I feel that, you know, seeing that, you know, between Delon and Avery, as they might have been like shocked to, to realize, hey, these are how certain women are feeling. Um, when it comes to the things that I've seen coming up, um, it, it was almost, at least in the Hispanic cultures, normalized to see women in that certain fashion to how it was described in Facebook or not. And I had many men who were in my circle who would continually keep reproducing that same mentality and thought. Now, mind you, I come from a place where I was raised by women. You know, my father left young. So I understand to respect and love women and to see them pass an object and to see and look into their heart versus what's outside of them. But a lot, a lot of women, when they encounter certain people who are broken and hurt and don't know how to act because they've never really been taught by any type of man on how to really treat a woman, then their response is, oh, I think you think he looks like I look like a piece of meat or I, he just wants sex from me or I'm just used versus, you know, she is a queen. She is someone to be held high, a precious jewel, uh, a loving heart, a loving mom, you know, things can just keep going from there. That's what, that's what I think. Wow. So I'm sorry if I'm hearing you right. It, it sounds like you're, you're kind of putting a, a balance here in this response. You're saying some women um, are, are kind of in, impacted by the immaturity of some of the men they meet and therefore taking those experience with them to put them out there. And you also sound like I was briefly hearing from you share that there's some responsibility for the men here. Um, Avery, I see your hand will go right to you. Ask for comments already from YouTube. I want to thank our YouTube audience for commenting. Um, one, uh, one person says that uh, they don't believe the men on the panel are being realistic. Um, so I'm wondering what they're talking about, if we can get some more clarity. And another person, Gifty, says, I think some men need to evaluate their action towards women. They are not related to or attracted to. And that, uh, Avery, you had your hand up, so let me go to you with that. Do you, um, do you feel like you treat women equally uh, as you would treat those who are in your family? You mentioned coming from a matriarchal family, a lot of women having taught you and raised you. Do you feel your treatment of women is the same across the board? So I would say yes. I think the reason being more so is that I think it's just about like the way you were raised. It's more about just decency, courtesy, respect. It's not a thing of like, um, I would say that um, yes, if I'm attracted to a woman, if there is some, um, you know, familial tie there, of course, you're going to have more respect for your family or somebody that, that you like or you're in a romantic relationship with. However, I think that I also just treat women with respect every day like i've just um yeah i just like but i think that that's how i was raised it's not a woman thing it's just a people thing i also respect you to, if i see you on the street i'm not just going to disrespect you for no reason um but if to be to be something i wanted to comment on to be just a little bit uh, more realistic if we're not being realistic enough um i would say that there somebody was talking about maturity and i kind of agree in the sense that there's responsibility on both sides um just because prior experiences with men may have caused you to believe that this is how men view you, I don't think that it's fair to say, to make that generalization and just say men, you know, do it this mm -hmm. way and this is how men treat me. But I also think that it's, it's a responsibility as, for us as men to also understand how things, how we do things and how like, like you know, the, the, the commenters are saying how we do interact with women, how society views women, how they're overly sexualized, the music that we listen to, how they're called, what different names. So I do think that we also shouldn't be naive and say like the this, these things don't exist and nothing is going on. But I don't mm -hmm. think that it's fair for women to just, to also just kind of say that men as a whole were terrible. Cause I do think that we can also have terrible interactions and we can also come to conclusions on our own and say that women are also X, Y, Z. But I don't, mm. so maturity, I think maturity on both sides is what I'm trying to say. Okay, I appreciate that. Pierre, I see that we have you back. Are you, are you with us here? 
Great, great. Up here, I want to, um, a person in the comments said, uh, I think some men treat women in their family and that they are attracted to in terms of wife material different than women that fall out of those silos. So let me see if I'm understanding this comment from YouTube. Um, the, the person is basically, I guess, alluding to the fact that if you find someone attractive to, you treat them some way. If there's some person's in your family, you treat them some way if they're a woman. But if they're not in those categories, uh, i.e. maybe unattractive or not family, um, they're not treated the same peer. Do you have any thoughts around that? Once again, um, oh, there we go. I think we got question, um, I heard you were kind of breaking up a little bit. And if I'm, if I'm, if I'm breaking up, um, I apologize, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I think um, we compartmentalize. I think sometimes um, we, we, know, we know better. Um, we know that, you know, oh, this is mine, this is my sister, this is my mother, this is my wife. And then everything else we do because um, we put those other women in a different compartment. Um, it's okay. We rationalize it in our heads. Even if we don't consciously do that, we see other people do it and we follow suit. Um, so we, we have this kind of duality in the way that we treat uh, women um, and uh, I mean, it's unfortunate, but it is, it is the case. Um, I think if we're honest with ourselves and we say, look, I wouldn't want my daughter treated that way, or I wouldn't want my mother treated that way, it would change the way that we would treat all women in general. I appreciate your response there. You talked about this idea of compartmentalizing. I wanna draw in one of the feelings from last week, Avery, I saw your hand. Um, it appeared as though uh, a lot of the energy that was put out last week was this idea of despite men um, supporting the women that they're connected to stro so strongly that, that the dichotomy that does exist between their family members and the women that they're attracted to and those that are not, it's so staunch that it's actually hurtful and harmful. Um, it, it seemed the energy was this idea of, can we carry that forth? Can we, do we, are we willing to look at all women as women um, like our family members, like those we're attracted to. Conversely, because I, there was one person in the chat that said, a woman will look at any black man, any black man and see them as their father, their uncle, their friend, their husband. And so we'll carry that energy in terms of injustices, gentlemen, in terms of injustices, they'll look at them the same. Um, I wanna see, Avery, you had your hand up, so I'll go to you and then Dylan, I see you, oh, all right. Uh, Dylan, uh, what are your thoughts about that? If we're if we're going in terms of injustices, I I, I guess I'll say that yes. Um, but as to the every day, you know, if you pass a guy on the street, a black man on the street, um, it's not to say that one side does it more than the other, you know. But it comes down to your personal respect for human beings in general. Mm -hmm. I think um, when it comes to how you treat them, another man, it may not be how you treat your father or how you treat your brother or mm -hmm. your son, you know? Um, I, I think when we get to that avenue, it more so relies upon, okay, well, what do you, what, what, who are you to me, mm -hmm. you know? Um, because people don't really respect people that they don't know off the bat unless they personally do that for everybody, right? It depends on how your character is. Um, because I mean, there are nasty people on both sides, but mm -hmm. at the same time, I'll tell you this, um, when it comes to respecting and, and, um, you know, trying to make sure that there is some sort of difference mm -hmm. made and whatnot, when it comes to social justice, I will say like black women do show up like nine times out of 10 black women do show up no matter what, you know, whether it's a woman or a man, they do show up. Wow, I appreciate that. I actually want to share a comment from YouTube. Again, I want to thank our YouTube audience for uh, staking with us and commenting live. At Karen says, just an observation that most men do not value women, especially Black women. It's false to believe that these things do not happen to us on a daily. Gentlemen, I, I want to make this more um, specific. The Black women in our community um, as reflected by the small uh, sample size, both on Facebook that have commented on these posts and from um, the chat are trying to tell men, hey, I don't think you guys are doing enough to support us. I actually don't think you guys view us with respect. Um, 
what are your thoughts to that direct statement um, as, as represented by some of the black community? You don't essentially, I think at Karen is basically saying, if you don't recognize that these uh, injustices and devaluing of, and disrespect is existing in the community for black women, then you are simply not seeing it correctly. What are your thoughts to that thought? Eh? I'll go with you first. Pierre, I'm coming to you next. Oh, uh, I, 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 I want to say that, yes, uh, there are some men who, who don't, uh, don't respect or back up black women in, in, in our community. Um, especially when I look at the, the hip hop and rap game, um, a lot of times uh, black women are just used for the way that they look, not because mm -hmm. they might have a doctorate degree or masters, or they might have mm -hmm. taken care of three children, you know, great wife. It's more of just the, the object. And, and I think um, we, mm -hmm. we, we as men uh, have to be willing to stand up just as much as they stand up for us when we're down or when we're not being treated right. I appreciate you sharing that. Um, Pierre, I'm going to go to you next, and then Avery, I saw your hand. God, it's got to be me, man. I just, Pierre, I'm just going to let you speak spontaneously. Hello? Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah. Anyway, um, to answer that, uh, I think. Um, Wait, rephrase the question again. Um, women are basically saying that black men have ignored the, the fact that they have been devalued. Black women are saying that they, uh, black men have ignored the fact that they are devalued in our communities. Essentially that they do not uh, step up in, in particularly during times of injustices the way that they do. Um, and I was saying, what are your thoughts to that as a black right. man? I, I think that that is in general true. I think the difficulty that we have in these conversations is that we're talking about 54 million Black people or, or 45 million, I'm sorry, um, a million Black people in the United States. So that's a lot of room for variation. You know, so you and me, Rob, might do things differently than um, Avery and Tade or somebody else. And so we may say that doesn't apply to us. But I think it's important to understand the general situation and understand that even if we don't identify with that aspect of the situation, there is a problem that we can still give agency to, that we can still advocate for, and we can still improve or make better. So it might not be you, mm -hmm. black guy that's watching, but it might be somebody down the street from you or your friend or your barber or whoever it is. Um, so I, I think that is very true. Um, and I think the other aspect is that sometimes we're so distracted by our own struggles and our own stress that it makes it difficult for us to see what's going on with somebody else. You put somebody drowning in the water, even if they're drowning with their spouse, and immediately they're only thinking about themselves. It's happened multiple times. People see that in the news uh, where uh, somebody drowns their spouse out of panic, not because they don't care about them, but just because they're focused on their own struggle. Uh, so I think that that is true. And I think you know it's unfortunate it does happen, but those are some of the reasons why. Um, one other thing is that we have to also understand that this is a struggle for black people, a struggle for men versus, and women, and then a struggle for black women. And those create three different aspects of that same struggle. I appreciate you sharing. Avery, I'm gonna to go to you next and then I have some comments from you too. All right, so I was just gonna say one thing that was mentioned before. I don't think it's fair, but I understand it, but I don't think it's fair to say that black men treat the people in their lives who they respect or they're attracted to different mm -hmm. because so do women so do white men and women so do people if you mm -hmm. have a relationship with somebody that is romantic or is family you just treat your family better that's so i just don't like that but i would say i agree with what's the, the comments 100 percent they're absolutely right there are um a lot of injustices black men do not care as much um, for Black people, we don't show up the same way that Black women show up for us. I agree 100%. Mm -hmm. um, but as I was listening, I was just thinking, like, where did this come from? Just trying to find the origin, and I don't know. I really don't know how we got here, but I would say that this is, I'm kind of with Pierre. This is a lot, there's many layers here. There's many different dynamics and things to unpack. I would say one thing that I noticed is that this kind of goes back to the Black home and Black fathers. 
and you know their absence but I also think that sometimes I see some black couples where mom is more outspoken mom is more present with the kids and dad is just that is just dad dad doesn't show emotion dad doesn't show that is, that is just dad. He might go to work, but then dad doesn't have much of a personality. So I do think that this could even, you know, not to make everything about slavery, but this can even go back to slavery. And like, I just don't think men have shown a lot of expression and, and presence in the family the same way mom does or the black mother does. As a result of that, you know, black women, black daughters are just kind of left to fend for themselves, you know? So I think that there's a lot of aspects but um, you know, there's there's just so much. But I agree 100%. We don't we don't show up. So I think that's a great segue. I'm actually getting feedback um, from my producers. Uh, Flo is, is stepping up his game. That the, the, basically in the chat room, w the panelists are being asked to discuss the history that has led to these views. Um, and where I'm not going to ask you gentlemen to speak as historians, yeah. I think for your own lives, you are historians. And so um, I'd like to hear. If you're willing, were there, was there ever a point where you can look back and say, wow, I definitely didn't view Black women in the best possible light? And I'll be transparent for myself. Um, one of my favorite rappers between the, the years of like 95 and 2010 were Jay-Z. Um, I was big on Jada Kiss. And I essentially just really loved the hip hop movement like many of my peers, I, I assume. And I know there were a lot of songs that told me about what a hoe is, right? Um, what a hoe looks like, um, how a hoe behaves, right? And what a bee looks like and how a bee behaves. Now, I wanted to use those terms first because the images that come to my mind, if I'm honest with myself at the time, were all black women, right? Or, or, or women of color. But I want us to be honest and say black women, right? The song uh, Tip Drill, if any of you um, saved person were ever unsaved at a point, if you look at that video, right, if you ever watch BET Uncut, it's all black women, right? All women of color really kind of behaving in ways that as a man, you're like, yeah, man, that'd be, that'd be my unchristian like dream right there. And so I, I want to kind of ask you all, right, with that framework, with me being transparent, like there was a point in time when, you know, I, I wanted to have notches on my belt. Where's there ever a point in your individual histories, right, that you can point to and say, hey, wow, I didn't view black women in the best light and maybe speak to a little bit of what you think that could have, what could have influenced that? How you saw black women and what influenced that? Dylan, I'll start off with you. How I saw black women and how I influenced that, I'm gonna be honest, there were, when it comes to like music and stuff like that and the media, how we, you know, view women, um, you know, in that type of light, um, of course, you know, as I said before, it's, it's something that has been normalized through, uh, you know, just seeing and calling, you know, women certain names. Um, and it's it, it's not to say that, you know, women were all forced into this. Of course, you know, the, a lot of them wanted to be famous. A lot of them said, hey, well, I might as well make OnlyFans. I might as well do this or whatever in order to be, you know, on top or whatever. You know, like a lot of people will look at the Kardashians and be like, oh, okay, well, how did three women who didn't really have a talent become multimillionaires and this, that, and the fourth. And it's, it's because of this problem. It's literally because of this problem. We're over-sexualizing. And of course, ge the general population of, you know, black, you know, not just black men, but men in general won't, you know, say, oh, well, you know, I don't want you to take off your clothes in front of cam in front of the camera and stuff like that, you know? Um, you know, and it, it's something that we would have, that men would have to say, hey, listen, you know, even though a lot of men enjoy seeing this and enjoy having this type of thing on social media and whatnot, you have to step back and say, listen, let me take the mature route and say, I, I, I got to let this go. You got to let this go. And we have to change and say, okay, well, listen, listen, if that was my daughter up there, if that was my mother, if that was my cousin, I'd feel some type of way. Mm -hmm. And unless we take that approach as a, uh, from a general um, standpoint for men uh, uh, on a whole, nothing's going to change. Because if there are customers, there will always be vendors all the time. So wherever there's a need, someone is always going to try to fill that need. So if men, if men start to say, you know what? Nah, nah, put your clothes back on, sis. Like we got to, 
We want we want we want to have a more wholesome community. It it'll be different. Wow, thought I want to go to you next. Um, then I'm gonna bounce down up here. Then Avery, um, thought I, what are your thoughts? Is there, was there ever a time in your your history, your personal history, where you view black women non favorably, and what influenced that? You're still on mute, bro. Sorry, as a, as an Afro Latino, um, black women were never really on my radar. Okay. And every time I would actually see a black woman between a music video or whatever else, it was always like, those are the women who, who will do whatever versus mm -hmm. either Hispanic, white, you name it, whatever. So as, as viewing um, black women within that light, I, I kind of had to, to realize, wait a minute, you're black yourself, bro. Like, are you gonna allow, you know, those those women to be okay, but yet you have a mom and a sister who are also black. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? No. So I had to, I, had to, I came to realization, you know what? All women, whether you're black, brown, white, mm -hmm. have to be, you know, we, we carry the narrative. So we can say, just like Delon said, we can say and, and stand up, yo, we don't want this anymore. We can, we can do better. You know, we, we want people to, to have higher standards and more respect for themselves. And we can support them to have more of that. But if, when I stood back at one time to just support that and be like, that's cool. I like to watch it, but I'm, I'm not going to be about her. You mm -hmm. know? Wow. And actually, wanna, um, I want to go to you, Pierre, next. But there's a comment here from YouTube again. Um, at Kerry says, the black man, wait, I'm sorry, no, sorry, at Crystal set. My apologies, let me start again. At Kerry says, the black men I'm around are conditioned to seek Asian, Latino, and white women and disregard black women because we supposedly have an attitude. And thought I, I thought that was connected to some of what you're saying. Um, I'll be transparent, my time during transition from New York to New Jersey, uh, black women weren't really on my radar. It was uh, Latino first, uh, then white, and then black. And, and personally at times because of how I viewed black women. So I'm just being transparent there. Uh, Pierre, what are your thoughts? Um, you know, so I had a, uh, interesting, uh, right, kind of different upbringing in the sense that I was born in California and I was born and I've always lived in the white or Hispanic and Asian neighborhoods, um, my entire life. Um, and up until I went to the illustrious Howard University, um, I had not necessarily been in a community with a diverse population of black women. Still then, um, as a Haitian American, I saw the example of my parents and my family members. I didn't get that. I wasn't, um, I, I, I guess that kind of culture that was around me. I, I didn't see that as much as black women being objectified. I didn't, I didn't get that. That wasn't infused into me. But I did kind of see as like black women maybe weren't as good as. Mm. Um, and that was unfortunate at first. But I remember, and this is a key to us changing this narrative. My youth pastor, Hispanic guy, and Hispanic, like looks white Hispanic. One time we were in a ski trip, Pathfinders, we were going somewhere and we got into the discussion about which women are the most beautiful. And he actually said, you know, guys, I actually think that if you really think about it, women, no matter what group or ethnic group that they come from, there's always beautiful women no matter what ethnic group that there is. And that made us all, the three other guys, young guys in the car, we paused and from that moment I realized you know what I need to start thinking about this differently mm -hmm. and when I went to Howard I actually started to encounter a lot more black women from all across the nation and see how they were different and how they were similar and just see so much beauty and diversity in who a black woman was someone from Louisiana is not the same as somebody from Oakland or from somebody from Chicago or somebody from New York and there's this amazing beauty in who a black woman is so I, that was just my experience. Wow, I am carrying forward over Avery. It, it sounds again like uh, between, I guess, myself, Thade, and you here that a lot of our cultural context partly influenced how we view Black women. Um, Transitioning to you, Avery, was there ever a time in your history where um, you didn't view Black women favorably or in the best light? And what influenced that? Um, I, I think me growing up, similarly to you, you know, on, on hip hop and I don't know, rap culture, um, I saw the music videos, I heard the songs, but um, I've never stopped loving black women. I think um, I always was under the impression that not my wife, 
not my sister, please God, not my mom. You know what I'm saying? I just always thought that there was, you know, there was women on music videos. There was a woman that they rapped about in the songs. And then there was my woman. There was the women in my life. So, um, you know, popular culture didn't do much to change my opinion about black women. Um, I would say, I think one thing that I might be guilty of is just the fact that I think what some of the commenters are getting at is like, I can probably meet a woman and I can say, this is somebody that I don't see myself marrying. And as a result of that, I am more likely to, if I was living this type of life, um, you know, mess around with her. Let's just put it all out there. We would have sex. There would be no strings attached. And mm -hmm. then I would kind of move it on. But just because I didn't recognize her or view her as somebody of, I guess, more worth or, or like wifey material, like somebody commented. Um, but I also want to mention that that's not a black woman thing. That's just a woman thing. If it was a Hispanic woman, it would be the same. Um, but, but yeah, I don't think I've ever stopped loving black women. I still love you guys to this day um, till I die. So gentlemen, what the energy is, I'm trying to keep track of the comments in the chat and some of the things read over Facebook. Why then? Is it that there is this unanimous feeling among women, Black women in particular, Black women in particular, that the Black man does not support them, does not see them with respect? Even if you want to say that you are not that person, what then has gone wrong? I, I watched a video today with uh, Pastor Kelly as he spoke to um, what seems to be a continuous tension between Black women and Black women in our community. This idea that we cannot both equally, right, rise to the top. And the few persons that we see do so, right, it is still with a unbalanced uh, bias of how they got there. So for example, Jay-Z and Beyonce, many people look at as being like, wow, that's black excellence. Look at their power, look at their couple. But Jay-Z's history is tainted, right? Tainted with infidelity, tainted with, um, you know, a, a sketchy and questionable things. And so I, I, I got to be honest, if it was Beyonce, I don't know if we've had the same level of grace that Jay-Z has been explained. And I think that's what women, Black women are speaking to. Like black women are speaking to this idea that you as a Black man are always supported, right? I forgive you. I, I, I love you. I, I you know literally go to fight and die for you but I'm not getting that same energy in return. So gentlemen, I really wanna dig deep into that. Um, I have a comment here. Uh, well, actually I have a direct comment. So sorry, let's pause on that for real quick. Um, someone asked specifically to Thade, um, why were black women not seemingly on your radar? Uh, what was behind that? Question was directly for you. Um, the reason why black women weren't really on my radar <clears throat> is because coming up, um, and some might not know within the Hispanic community, we're, we're almost taught to, you know, mejorar la raza, you know, better the, the race, you know, and that wasn't going to go marry a black woman. It is to go lighter than what you are in your complexion. Mm -hmm. So whoever I was seeking or looking, they were always constantly lighter skin than I am. So if, if at that time, that was that was acceptable, and now my eyes are open. And trust me, I I love and I have a beautiful black woman right here. I'm blessed beyond measure. Trust me, black women are excellent, no matter what. But in my youth, I was foolish, and I was taught a certain manner of thought. Mm -hmm. That's why. And I think we need to dissect that because I think Avery's talking to that, and I'll share that too. I am now also married to. Um, a beautiful black queen. But I'll be honest, overall, even listening to her in last week, gentlemen, and this is why we're having this conversation, absent women, because there's still an issue here, right? There's still something that's being missed. Women emphatically are saying, when given the spaces to be heard, I wanna point that out, gentlemen, when given the spaces to be heard, are saying, I don't feel heard. I actually feel devalued and I feel disrespected. So now I'm coming to you, gentlemen, whom I trust and speak to, what do we need to do to change that narrative? What's, what has allowed that to exist? Let's actually dig deep into that um, as we kind of shift moving forward. What has allowed, um, what has transpired that 
encourages this lack of support and devaluing for our black queens, despite us saying, hey, but if it's my mom and my sister, I got you. But there's still something missing, gentlemen. So Avery, I saw your hand go, going to you first. Uh, I mean, I was just gonna mention uh, just uh, an experience that I had talking to a friend. We would joke around sometimes and say things like, um, and these were all jokes, but we would say things like, we have to marry um, someone from another country or a woman like, you know, those, those, those weddings or those arrangements where like people with green cards and stuff. We would joke around like that because we would say that these women would appreciate us. And we would um, just, we're under the impression that like, I, I think it goes back to leadership. I think when black men look outside of the black woman um, population for wives or just for love, I do think that it is, they're under the impression that it's gonna be a fight. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a back and forth. And, and mm -hmm. I think that they are, they don't want that. So they're just like, look, I can find a Hispanic woman, I can find an Asian woman, I can find a woman that don't even speak English and she's gonna treat me like a king or whatever it is. But I do feel like they might believe that with being with a black woman is gonna mean she's gonna throw things at, like the, the stuff that you see on TV or everything on BET. It's gonna, like you mentioned the whole Jay-Z and Beyonce. It's funny that you mentioned that because it's almost like you need to have a past of like craziness. There's another guy who's worse than Jay-Z, Gucci. Gucci done did crazy things, but then he's married now, his wife, and like they're like this success story. Or like sometimes in the black community, we idolize relationships like a Jay-Z and a Beyonce or a Gucci, but these are very toxic, dysfunctional, disgusting, like this is not the way that love is supposed to be. But a lot of us in the black community, we we kind of put those relationships on pedestals. So I would say that last thing, I do think that black men are some of us who walk away from black women, they don't want the smoke. They're just not about it. And they'd rather be leaders and kings in other wow. where people that are not going to fight them. That's just what I believe. That's my opinion. But no, 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 no. I, this is the space. We're having this space. Avery, right. I'm going to jump in because there's a comment, please, if I can okay. just jump in on that. Yeah. A lot of the things that were shared by Black women is this concept of intimidation, yeah. that we are intimidated, uh, that men have been intimidated by the black woman, particularly the black woman of today. We'd be very transparent. The black woman of the last decade um, or, or, or two, like, like last 20 years Absolutely. has been intimidating um, to the black man. And I speak for myself yeah. in full transparency that I was like, nah, to your point, I'm gonna I'm a keep it a buck. I don't want that smoke, right? I, I'm not trying to have, I don't wanna have arguments all the time, right? Yeah. I don't wanna have an attitude, right? I don't have to deal with your attitude or your energy, right? I do want somebody who will treat me like a leader. Mm -hmm. To you, my gentleman, I call this out. Yo, can, can I add this real quick? So uh, I would say too, I do think that once again, like going back to what we discussed earlier, this is bigger than, this is not just a black man. We didn't cause this is what I'm trying to say. There's a lot of people at fault here. And when I, I want to like talk about racism and slavery, but it's kind of putting us against each other. Um, one thing when I was growing up, I didn't think that darkest skin was beautiful. Mm -hmm. And thank God that I got over that. But there would be little girls in my class who were dark skin, but we, you know, would idolize some of the just like like what um, my boy said right here. We would look at lighter women as like, yo, this is what we need, you know. But mm -hmm. that's who did that to us. We didn't do that. That's just how we were kind of conditioned. So mm -hmm. I do think that like there's a lot of aspects involved. Um, and and it, like, yeah, it's, it's not just, a, but like, like I said, now I think I could look at a dark skin woman. I used to not even be able to look at a dark skin woman, but now I can look at a dark skin woman and say, yo, she's fine. But once upon a time, it just wasn't there. But I would say that, you know, Dylan made a comment about women and the over-sexualization. This is a two-way street too. I mean, they're going to hate me for this, but. No, about to mute you. You get muted. Not okay. Even. <laughs> Bye. Um, because no, not, not happening. That's dangerous crap. But we'll talk about it, right? Uh, I think I knew where he was going, but I want to carry that energy from before. This idea of the attitude, right? The woman who is going to be loud and combative and um, who's not going to treat me like the leader I want to be. Gentlemen, I want to talk to you guys. Is that more an issue about what it means to be masculine and less the issue about the Black woman? Let me go to Pierre. You've been quiet. Let me go to you first and then go to you, thought I saw you. I already saw you asked yourself, so I'm going to Pierre, Pierre first. Um, yeah, I think, I think that that is part of it. Um, and I think, you know, in conversations like these, I, I would just want to 
quick PSA. We need to do, we need to, to engage, we need to talk to other black women and research beyond this conversation. So I'm putting that out there right now. But this is not, this is just, this is just a, this is just a brainstorming session, if you will. Um, and I hope that people will carry this further. But, but yeah, um, that is one aspect of it. Um, if we do not understand masculinity in and of itself and what we are comfortable with, whether or not the world has, shares that view, then we are, we are vulnerable to whatever it is that the world puts in front of us as this is the way that we need to be. Um, I think another aspect is that we need to be, um, we need to get rid of this idea of the angry black woman or strong black woman being a threat. Um, she is not a threat to anyone that, that is appropriate. And we also, I will also say that we cannot label every kind of black woman and every kind of behavior as, oh, she's being a strong black or angry black or whatever it is. We have to be careful. We have to separate mm -hmm. what is what is good and what is not good or what, what does not apply. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are strong black women out there uh, that whatever, maybe they make more money. That's okay. Build together. Build together. Hashtag mm. stay at home dad. Black dads at home. Just trying to make that <laughs> pop. Black dads at home. Anyone? Okay. No. Um, Thada and then you, Dylan. I see you had your hand up. Um, I'm looking at even more that this is a man issue and not a, a black woman's problem. To, to, oh, hold on, sorry. Tarek, could, sorry, could, boss. Could, if, I could, if I could steal a little bit of your time, I meant to mention something, again, testify to this. My mom has almost always made um, almost two times as much as my father has. And I've lived and seen that and I've seen how they've worked and it's not always easy, but it is doable. And it doesn't mean that the woman has to overpower or the man has to try to... That doesn't have to exist. It's doable. Anyway, go ahead, Tarek. Sorry. So, so on the thank you, Pierre, for that that comment. It's actually very good. Um, a lot of people don't realize that a lot of some as a lot of the times, black women are out earning black men in their lives, and that's okay. That is fine. Can y'all work together? Can you build? <clears throat> but to go back to that, this a masculine issue that some men don't know how to step up. Some men don't have the courage or don't know how to be a man, especially with somebody who can be fierce, intense, knows what they want, is very mm -hmm. decisive. Mm -hmm. Like there's nothing wrong with those things. If, mm -hmm. if you as a, as a man don't know how to handle or, or act appropriately with a woman like that, then my brother, you need to move aside and let someone else who can. Otherwise, you're just gonna fail. Go ahead, bro, sorry. So, I mean, I just wanted to say, so um, when it comes to people saying, well, Black women have attitudes, is that in the fourth? Blah, 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 I just want to reiterate, you have to separate the, uh, you know, the, the stereotypes from what the truth is. You know what I'm saying? As a Black man, I've grown up around Black women my entire life. And I can tell you, like, they will call you on your crap. Facts. And I have, I, I'm going to be honest, and I haven't, you know, I haven't experienced all races of women, but I will say this about the black woman. She will call you out on your, on your stuff. And if you don't come correct, you know what I mean? It, that's, that's just, that's just it, you know? Um, so it, it, that's something that I think as a man, it's sort of a make or break thing. It's not to say that, okay, well, if a woman calls you out on something and she says, well, you're not a man, that doesn't necessarily you know, say, okay, well, you're not, you know, your masculinity is, is, is non-existent. No, it just means maybe you need to reassess something. Maybe there's something about you that you can go back and check. And, you know, if you're not comfortable in yourself about something, go back and check out, check, check what's going on. You know, maybe there's something you can change about that. Um, you know, but I, I think as, as a, as a man in America, um, I've, I've always told people this, you know, never, never tell, never let someone else tell you how to be you right mm -hmm. i don't think any any woman can come and tell me what what a real black man is per se because they haven't lived they haven't walked in my shoes mm -hmm. you have it being 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 a big black man is myself walking on the sidewalk i talked about this um leaving our flow meeting the other week um i sometimes I sometimes get a little bit uncomfortable when I'm walking on the same side of the sidewalk with let's say a white woman and her family or a white woman and her kids, because I want to make sure that she's not offended. She doesn't fear for her life or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And it's just like, if I can say a nod or say hi or whatever, a wave, 
and make it and, and take it down. I, I'll try to do that. But, you know, it, it's it's something where as a black man, there are so many different social cues and things that go on that unless you've lived it, it's just it's no one else can tell you how to how to really be something that you, you've been trying to live and become your entire life. Avery, I see your hand up. Go ahead. I just wanted to say, you know, uh, I love black women. And I also wanted to comment that black men are intimidated, as they said, um, for good reason. You know, black women have been killing the competition for, for years now. They're the most educated uh, group. Um, and, you know, they at the point now where they, they earn more than us. Um, but I think one thing to make to note here is just that men are often looked as uh, very functional in the beings. I mean, women, I guess sometimes as well, but I, I think work is a sensitive place for us because as a man, I think you're kind of raised, even in the Bible, you know, Adam, go, go plant, go farm, go do something. And I do think that with work, especially when you can't be the breadwinner or you can't feel as if the work that you're doing is like, you know, it's, it's, it's important. Mm -hmm. Then, um, then it's, it causes challenges, you know, I, I would say that. Um, but I also did just want to mention that, um, where does this come from? I think it's, it's fathers, it's parents, like black men are not, don't want to step up and match the education or match the work ethic of black women because maybe we haven't seen it um, in our dads. I don't know, but there's just, there's a lack of leadership and we're just not interested. We, I think that as young people, especially, we don't want to do anything that's hard. And black women are taking the hardest routes in life. They're, they're just, they're, like I said, they're breaking all the barriers. And black men, we're just kind of like, yo, we're just going to chill. Well, I actually want to read a comment here um, to both what you said, Avery, and to Dylan. Um, someone says, at Dylan specifically, facts, a man or a woman should not be afraid of the truth. Why every, why, I'm guessing, everything the black woman may say to y'all is about masculinity. We need to work together to build. And I think, Thought, I'm going to actually draw that out and transition to once again. Let's be honest, guys. I think it is about what it means to be a man, right? The, the issue that men or that women, black women in particular, have with black men is that we struggle with what it means to be a man. Even at Avery, I believe you, you brought up some things that we need to address, right? If you can't work, does that make you less of a man? I know messages that we receive continue to provide that. Provide that. If we didn't have a, a father figure, like I will, I can actually, I know, I, I didn't grow up with a father. My biological father was not in the home. I had father figures. I had one for a significant amount of time. Um, that is probably the first real example that I had of what it means to treat a woman, but it wasn't consistent, let me be honest. And not to the fault of the person, but my mom's personal business, okay? But that was the first example. Does Avery have a point, gentlemen? Like, do we need to really begin to do some internal work to learn what it means to be a man that doesn't, get this, here's my thoughts, you guys, I wanna hear your thoughts on this, that doesn't have to combat what it means for a black woman to be a woman. Can we find a space to be a man, as a black man in America, that doesn't have to come into contradiction or combat what it means to be a black woman? Is that possible? Where do we begin? Anyone, it's open for anyone. Uh, I agree, that sometimes I think, like I said, once again, this is this is it, it, both both parties are involved. I do think that women, as as daughters, as little girls, and you know, teenagers, they're also conditioned or raised to kind of look at men in the same way. What does he do for work? You know, a parent might question who, the person that the the daughter is dating, and like, what is this person doing in life? Like, so from a young age, they're already kind of looking at what are you doing? You have to have something going on. Um, I would say sometimes in other cultures, I know like I had a friend that went to South America and she was saying that um, it's almost offensive to ask somebody what they do for a living because it's not about that, you know? But I do think here in the United States, especially, it's like you meet somebody, you, you might be attracted to them. Y'all start talking and then you, just, what do you do? Yeah. You know? 
So I, so I don't know. I, I, I would say that I, I think um, me, I'm more comfortable. I actually want my wife to earn more money than me because like, I have, I'm have i like you. I'm like you. I want to be a stay-at-home dad and I want to start a club. I want to wear the little baby harness on the front and go to the park. Like, I no, want I'm, all of that. Where, wherever you live in, whatever suburb you live in, <laughs> be there too. We're going to put a little daddy group. Let's get houses right next to each other. However, I would say it would be hard. And it's like, you know, this is like, it's, it's not, it's, it's a double standard, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, it's like women would, a, a bunch of, group, a group of black women probably wouldn't like to hear this. I mean, they would want us to be dads and be present, but they also want us to go to work. So that's what I have to say. I, I'm okay with it. I don't really find my worth in what I do for, for a living, but I, do, I know it's a sensitive topic. Go ahead, Dylan. So I'll say this. Um, I looked at, I saw one of the questions um, from Evie Clark. Um, and she was actually addressing you, Avery. She was saying, why do you think black men have chosen to sit back and chill basically, right? And I think a big part of that comes from taking up that, th there's, there's that toxic masculinity, well, not toxic masculinity, but some of those laws, unwritten laws basically, but mm -hmm. known but unwritten laws that you know a man is supposed to go out and work. Right. When he comes home from work, his wife should be cooking in the kitchen. If she's not cooking, she's rearing the children or whatever. You know, and a lot of those antiquated types of ideas, I think black men have just said, well, we know it's bad, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just going I'm just going to sit back and still accept that. so I can chill. You know what I'm saying? In the sense where they're they're knowingly a lot of men are knowingly saying, OK, well, I know that this is, you know, not a current a current uh, way of living, right? We have to work together as parents. We have to work together, you know, as partners in a relationship, you know, and I think that it's something that we have to say, okay, well, now nah, you got to get with the times, you know what I'm saying? Because your wife, like, listen, if she can make more money than you, even though if you want me to go to work, that's fine, but I'm, I'm cool being a stay at home dad too. Like make that money, you know, you're making double digits, six digits, whatever. Like, as long as we, we comfortable, we, you know what I mean? That's, that we, that's, that's the point. You know, um, but I, I think that as the younger generation of men are growing up, we can entice and say, hey, listen, talk to the older generation and say, hey, listen, look at the way I'm trying to raise my family. I'm trying to make a difference here. What can I do to show you that this this works for us black men and look at my family, look at how we're, we're moving forward, we're progressing and we're getting so much done and look how much happier she is. I, I would just I would just say influence the older generation. Um. Uh, before th I thought I'd go ahead. I'll, I'll answer the question in the chat. If we have a question from YouTube. We'll go to it after you. Go ahead, Thought. Um, I I'll also agree that you know a lot of the things that are happening nowadays is people want to impose gender roles, mm -hmm. but in 2020, uh, um, a man can cook and clean and take care of children just as much as a woman can. There is no there's no difference. You can earn just as much money or less. Like we our society has created these things, but in fact. If I'm if I'm at home because Corona happened, wife is working all the time as a nurse. I'm gonna cook. I'm gonna clean. I'm gonna make sure things are done because it's not just her her, her responsibility or her her thing to do. It's my home as well. I gotta do something about it. So women shouldn't feel that yo men are just want to be lazy. They just want to not do anything. Mm -hmm. No, I think we're we're very much more than capable of doing of doing anything. It's just people want to be fit into certain roles. I agree. Um, there's a, qu a question from at, <laughs> at Miriam Ogallo, um, also known as Miriam LeBron, just throwing that out there. Uh, so as a stay-at-home father, would you do the duty socially constructed for women to do as well? To at Miriam, everything but breastfeeding. I will physically do everything but breastfeeding because I can't. And if you want me to buy the pump harness with the little the drawers that hang off there for the kid with the... Hey, I I, I'll breastfeed. I'll find a way. Uh, I'll <laughs> I'm concerned at Avery. Um, uh, uh, but gentlemen, we, we, this toxic masculinity, listening to the women last week, uh, at the, I believe it was at Simone um, Smith who said last week, why then if a woman, why is our immediate response when women want step up in certain capacities to be like, well, I'll stay home. And I think she was speaking to this idea of just because I'm willing to do these things over here doesn't mean that you should do less. I'll start off with myself. I think what I want to communicate to any woman is that, hey, I'm willing to do whatever helps find the balance, right? It's not just because you're doing that means I don't want to. If we both need to work, then we both need to work. 
what I think I'm trying to communicate is this idea that my masculinity isn't wrapped up in working or isn't wrapped up in my salary. Um, it is this idea that I'm willing to do whatever creates balance in this relationship. Um, but gentlemen, here's the thing. How do we make sure that this brainstorming as Pierre calls it, right? About how men typically see women. How do we make sure that we're interrupting these spaces to disrupt um, this view that continues to go forward? I think I wanna shift us into kind of a bit of action. How do we begin to disrupt spaces where we've been a part of it, right? We've been a part of conversations, right? And we rapped about a woman and we talked about her stats, right? And we talked about um, how good they were. And even if we didn't actively talk about it, we were silent. So how do we disrupt these spaces? Starting with you, Pierre, again. So um, I'm gonna try to say this in, as succinctly as I can, and somebody can hit me up if they want, but I, I really spent some time brainstorming and thinking about this myself, like what is the issue? Mm -hmm. and I think that's part of, part of where we need to start is understanding the issue. Um, point blank period, black men need to spend more time and more energy on what black women are struggling with and supporting them, mm. point blank period. Okay. Um, whether we don't have the time or energy now, we need to find a way to get it. And there are a couple of areas that we need to, to address. We need to pay attention. We need to be aware. If we don't know what's going on, we can't do anything. We don't even, we, 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 we can't support. We can't uh, give applause if we don't know if somebody did something applause worthy and we can't help a problem if we don't know about a problem. 80%, um, four out of every five black women deal with fibroids at some point in their life. Yeah, yeah. We don't know what that's like. We need to understand that. Just because it doesn't affect us, we need to understand that. That's what I mean by being aware. Um, if, a, 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 if we're aware, then we can then move to the next thing, which is affirm and testify. Um, so we can affirm our women in, in, in private and testify about them in public, whether they are a celebrity, like with the whole Beyonce thing. Um, I started learning about a whole bunch of actors that could or actresses that could have been stormed that I never even knew existed. We need to learn more and we need to support those people. We need to advocate. We need to put them out there more, right? We need to affirm our women in private and in public, just like we want that affirmation. Uh, you know, we can speak life, even if she isn't where we want her to be right now, we can speak life into who she can be and who she will be. Um, death and life is in the power of the tongue, as Proverbs 18.21 says. And we can speak, so even if we say, oh, well, you know, that woman, oh, she's too angry. She's got too much of an attitude. She's got, what? cut that, cut that. You're not perfect either, by, by any means. Um, and I think we can speak um, affirmation to that. There's so much more, but, um, I, 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 I know the time limit. I, I, I have a whole list, but. Matt Dylan, what are your thoughts? Um, I, mean, I, I agree. I agree. Honestly, a lot of us men, we kind of look at it as a Ooh. list sometimes where we look at women in the sense where if they don't, you know, check off all of our boxes, can she cook? Does my mom like her? Is my family going to accept her? This and the fourth, um, you know, we kind of disregard them to be completely honest, you know, and realistically we can you know feed feed into them in a sense give them give them what they need to be better if they you know if they're lacking in a certain um you know respect and they want to change first of all don't you know not forcing somebody to do better but wanting them to do better for themselves you know that's that's where the real change starts that's where the real change begins you know um and you know build again build with your partner you know, there's no better change than that feeding into them, making sure that, okay, well, how can I always help you and support you mm -hmm. realistically? Don't be lazy, you mm -hmm. know, because the thing is, she's not lazy with you, you know, when you just, you're just not in the mood and you don't really want to do anything and whatnot, you know? Um, so give her, give her just as much attention and, 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 and sincerity as she would give you. Um, and if she doesn't give you enough, like talk about it, like, you know, like there conversation and and building um and 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 being sincere with each other is is the best thing i appreciate that uh pierre i know you had your hand up before i want to bounce to some other people all right he's getting here can you hear us all right thought i'm gonna go to you and then come back to pierre um what are your thoughts on this how do we disrupt these spaces how do we change going forward um as a man we definitely have to like Delon say support in every way and shape and form and fashion um, especially when it comes to education and career and, and helping rearing up children and being responsible in the home. It's, it's important and it's vital that as, as a black man, 
um, to support the black woman in all her endeavors, um, whether it be monetarily or educational wise. Um, for my wife, for an instance, we she wanted to go do her master's. My question was, man, it's going to cost a ton of money. My question is, my, my thing was, let's get it done. And what do I got to do to support you in this? Let's pay cash. So be it. We don't want to be in debt. Forget that. But it took, we had to support her in that decision, not just be like, well, you better go take out some student loans. I'm not paying for none of this. You know, I had to be intentional. So we have to be intentional in the way that we're treating our women in our community and around us and know that in every little aspect, in every little detail, whether it be emotional, physical, psychological, we have to support 110% because women need that. And especially our black women need that. I appreciate Um, hearing that. Um, Avery, what are your thoughts? um, We just, it's a system, uh, we have to do like a, a systematic approach here. It's just like, um racism you know this a lot has to change um we have to change the way we think and speak i think one to answer the the somebody's comment on why men are chilling i think it's because they're not being challenged i think about some of the guys that i know that are chilling who are in relationships who might have kids and just getting away with chilling nope all their friends are doing the same thing nobody's Mm -hmm. telling them to go out there and do more and then when it comes from you as the black woman challenging them Mm-hmm. It, it now contributes to the stereotype of she's angry and black, she's nagging and black, she's intense, she's fair, she's educated, she's everything in black. It, it can't come from you is what I'm trying to say. But for us, if we want to like really take some action steps, we got to stop let stop letting um, Dylan get away with what Dylan's getting away with. You know, we got to <laughs> stop letting Pierre <laughs> and everybody else. As black men, we got to start calling out our brothers and say, yo, bro, Go to your kids' basketball game. Go, kick, like, get out of my house. Stop playing 2K. Stop smoking over here. Like, we got to start pushing these men that are our friends that are around us and start pushing them back into their homes with their, their families and tell them to take care um, of their responsibilities. And love your wife. Go go rub her feet. Go do something. But I do think that that's something that we can do today. We can do that tomorrow. But it is going to, like, there's a lot that has to change. But those are some of the, I think, some, like, today steps that we can take in order to like you know make things different and more and healthy. Pierre had some more gap here minute and 30 Pierre good yeah, yeah. Uh, appreciate it um there's there's a there's a whole lot more I really spent a lot of time thinking about this so there's a whole lot more within a minute and 30 but one other thing I wanted to mention because I was really thinking how can we impact this when you're at work when wherever it is that you are um sacrifice time um, to recommend a black woman to do something or for some project, step out of her way and support her, give her that uh, platform, support her, don't take any credit for that. Um, allow her to get that shine because she needs it even more than you. You might believe that you need it, but she needs it even more than you in many spheres and in many um, instances. Um, celebrate um, who, as I said, celebrate who uh, she can be. Grab her a seat at the table get her into that conversation. When we think of somebody to recommend, this is again, going back to paying attention. You think of somebody for a situation, say, you know what, instead of just recommending your boy, like be aware of the black women that you can recommend and and be ready to recommend them for things so that they can actually have an advocate and have a voice where they don't normally have one. Um, There's a lot of other things. I think there's a couple of things we could level up on, on ourselves. The more that we build ourselves, our emotional health, our understanding, um, internally of ourselves, um, we, we will be able to be better supports of, of Black women. Um, and one quick thing I want to encourage everybody to do, think of five Black women close to you, not your mother, just five other Black women close to you. Pray for them and call them and ask them, how can I support you as a Black man? And ask them the question, how do you feel whether or not you're supported by Black men or not? How do you feel about that? Start that conversation with those women that you love. And Pierre actually uh, has my transition because I wanted to share with you all that my my beginning work in this process, my action step, gentlemen, is to really take an internal look at how the things that we are not aware of are impacting how we look at our Black women. Um, doing some internal work. Gentlemen, we are a product of a patriarchy, right? There are some things that we are afforded just because we're men. Now, we can look at the fact that we're, we're Black men, so we're under the white man, but we're still above the Black woman, right? And we need to be mindful of what that means for the spaces that Pierre is talking about that we then can create because we have the privilege of being a man 
in certain spaces, then we need to invite our black women into those spaces. That's some of the internal work we can do, right? How does the patriarchy afford us privilege, gentlemen? I think Avery said, we need to hold each other accountable. We need to call out Dylan for his crap. Dylan, you gotta stop your crap, man. Just stop it. I, I gotta cool. stop, I gotta stop. It's not cool. Um, we also need to support our women in their endeavors as Pierre and Thade said, right? Sometimes as men, we are so solution oriented. Things are so tied into our job and our work that when women say to us, hey, I want you to do this for me, we're seeing all the things that can't be done in those moments. Nope, because they don't do that to us, right? They're like, all right, cool. How are we going to get it done? And we need to look at that and be honest about that. And then I think the biggest one of all, and then this is what Pierre said, and I want to make sure we hear this. We need to listen, gentlemen, and listen to understand and to learn. Now, here's a crazy thing. We can't interrupt. <laughs> all right. We can't interrupt. That means you're gonna have to do everything you can in your brain to say, I, I'm just going to listen. Repeat the words that she's saying back to you, right? Listen for understanding. What is the feeling she's trying to convey? I think if we can begin in those, do those things, right? All that we're talking about in some way or possible, some way or capacity, we're at the start of this, okay? We're at the start of this. This is not an end goal, right? Doing all these things doesn't mean we got it. That's the start of it all, which is why I wanna, before giving you all the platform to share your final thoughts, I want, to, want you all to practice this skill with me of just listening, okay? I asked on Facebook to women, right? I wish a man would, okay? And these are some of the things that they said, and I want us all to just really receive this and hear it, okay? I wish a man would show more emotions. I wish a man, I'm sorry, let me get all the comments. You start from the beginning, sorry. I wish a man would be confident enough to say what's on his mind. I wish a man would Stop using manly to define them and embrace all forms of emotion. Get a pedicure. I wish a man would um, stop thinking every woman needs to follow him, especially if he's not qualified to lead. I wish a man would allow himself to open up without fear of thinking he's being soft or less of a man. I wish a man would stop thinking that showing emotion is weakness, even more than women's emotions are weakness. I wish a man would go to a doctor or at least take some medicine. That cough ache thing on your back, that ain't normal. Um, I wish a man would, were more discerning about who they chose as wives. I wish a man would keep their head up, hashtag Kings. Another one, I wish a man would show more emotion. I wish a man would be more upfront about their intentions. I wish a man would, Listen to understand instead of listening to refuse. I wish a man would manage their priorities. I see you, Dylan. Uh, you had a question or just? No, just I wanted to respond after you. So. Okay. Um, I wish a man would stop playing video games all the time. I'll be transparent. I got in my feelings. I was like, I don't play my video games all the time. Anyway, just we just listening. We just listening. Um, I wish a man would open up about their feelings. And um, I wish a man would treat women as equal in decision-making, family goals, financial management, individual identity, and et cetera. And that was just some, I had someone on the flow page. If you all give me a moment, I'll read those for you as well because they were just as powerful. Um, we have here, I wish a man would unlearn everything they have been told about what solidifies their manhood status. Wow, I wish a man would be more intentional, consistent, detail-oriented, and aware. I wish men would unlearn sexism and toxic masculinity, which is a tool of white supremacy. Go to therapy, get clarity about what it what is going on intentionally. Listen and read women's stories. We love you and we want the best for you. I wish a man would love like Christ loves the church. I wish a man would stop trying to fit in. Just go ahead and like the women you like, begin the healing process. I wish a man would be more consistent and then finally, I wish a man would go to therapy. That was what women shared if they, if men, if they could say something to a man and they would receive it. And so I wanted to share that with you all as my panelists, as being co-panelists with me. Um, and just before we kind of conclude, I want to give you guys a space to kind of wrap up where your head is at. Dylan, I know you had a hand, so I'll start with you and then go from there. Um, just want to start with you. How... Yeah, where are you now and where you want to go going forward, right? As it relates to Black women in our community, right? How we see her and um, our, how our advocates need allies. So Dylan, I'm starting with you. Platform's yours. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest. There are a lot of things we have to unlearn. I'll be, there's a lot of things that we've absorbed 
in the uh, environment around us. And we have to start realizing that we're not supposed to just, you know, uh, be floating around in the environment. We are supposed to affect the environment that we are in, right? As, you know, as a Christian, as a man, you know, you, you have to be able to do things for yourself um, and realize that, you know, if you're going to be um, in a relationship with a woman, not even, not even just in a relationship, you're going to have to uh, uh, interact with women on a daily basis, whether, whether you work, whether you, you know, do whatever you do, you know, on a daily basis, you will have to react with the opposite sex. And you're going to have to figure out how to, you know, uh, unlearn a lot of these bad tendencies that we have as black men and start to listen and start to actually uh, hear them out and not just listen to respond, but listen to, you know, take something in and say, okay, well, how can I actually change? What, what is she saying? Do I understand it? Ask questions if you don't, you know, that's completely fine, you know, um, and when, when it comes to certain things about men wanting to go to therapy and this and the forth, I will say this, going to the doctor, almost every man that I know that's married, legitimately, their wife is just like, I, I literally, I just drag them to the doctor all the time. And I'm just like, I don't know what it is about us, but we just have, we, we sometimes have this issue where we're just like, I don't need no doctor, I'm good or whatever. And maybe it's a, it's a masculinity, toxic masculinity thing. I'm not sure. I don't know. But, um, that's one of the things we have to unlearn. We, it, and it, that, it's okay to say that. Um, you know, and also a man opening up and, 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 and speaking his mind being, and, and having emotions and stuff like that. I will say, I will just say this. Um, a lot of men, it depends on how they perceive their, their women. Because if they perceive that their women will see them as weak or this, their woman will see them as more feminine, if they were to, you know, expose a lot more of their emotions, they might not feel comfortable doing that because that's, that's been, that's been how it's, you know, that's been, um, you know, the story for, for, for a lot of years. Um, men don't want to, you know, express themselves or whatever, because they're, they're seen as more feminine or whatever. So I think that women just say, you know, express that you won't express to your man that it's okay to, to, to speak your mind and, and, and open the dialogue to have a conversation. It's my producer. Um, we're going to go to, we're going to go to Avery next. What's your closing thoughts, Avery? How, what are you going to take, take with you? Um, closing thoughts. Women are right. They they got it right. They they hit it right there on the nail. We suck. We've been sucking for a while now. Um, but I I think um somebody said it. Stop trying to fit in. I think that's that's that really I like that one a lot. Um and unlearn everything you know about being a man, manhood and masculinity. I think that's where we have have dropped the ball or like our parents, our fathers have dropped the ball because it's allowed us as young black men to go out and define that on our own. And we might go to media and I don't know everywhere else to kind of look for that definition on what it means to be a man and as a result of it we we interact with women based on that. It, it affects our experiences with, with black women. Um, I think one thing is important for us as men as well is to be careful and be aware of what we consume. So, you know, if you, as a black man, I really don't know whoever was looking at that woman and just look at her and just see ass and thighs. That's really, that's just sad. But if you are viewing a woman that way, it's probably because you probably listen to a rap song or I don't know, you might watch porn. Um, so what we kind of take in on the regular, on the everyday basis and what our conversations are like, who's in our social circles, this has a huge impact on how we see the world and not just women, but how we see just everything. So I do think it's important that, you know, they mentioned therapy, but um, yeah, therapy is good, but we have to take a really uh, an internal look and, and just try to just get to know ourselves first and understand why we think the way that we do, why we behave the way that we do, and then kind of take it from there. And I mean, some guys don't care, to be honest. They don't care about how you think that they view you. Some guys don't care to, to, to they see nothing wrong. Like that's why they don't want to go to the doctor. So some of us don't see a problem with our behavior, but um, I think all of us can agree that we, we've been sucking for some time and we are all going to join 
the stay at home dad um, coalition and moving forward, we'll, we'll be better, better black men towards our women and there will be some superb black fathers. Pierre, I'm gonna go to you first and then go to Thada. Um, I think one thing that I, I definitely wanna take away and I encourage all of us to, to take away is to work on, um, again, paying attention, not just to black women, but to ourselves and the uncomfortable truths that we must address and tackle. Um, and I thought of this for myself is to constantly, and not in a negative way, but think of the term, I might be wrong here. I might be wrong about, I might be wrong for and, and complete that statement and work on completing that statement, um, not in a self-deprecating way, but in a, in a, in a self-exploration kind of a way. Um, and, and thinking about, I might be wrong about, about my position on this. I might be wrong about that, except that you can be wrong and then do something about whatever it is that you uncover. Um, we have to be okay embracing uncomfortable truths about ourselves because even though we say, this is me, it's not necessarily only you. It's it's the world that you've been brought up in that you've become. That doesn't mean you have to stay the way that you are. You can be a better version of yourself. So I think that that's one thing. The other thing is continuing this conversation, whether it's in church, having Bible study, whatever it is, finding a way to continue to bring this conversation back up. So it's a constant thought that we're learning constantly about it, that we're growing our knowledge and our understanding of it on a regular basis as a group of men together in men's ministry or or basketball or whatever it is, um, you know, if we get to the point of even not having to be socially distanced that way, um, or talking to other women about that as well. I mean, learning, asking, being being students of this issue. Uh, thought of your space. Um, as some of my closing thoughts would be, um, and Pierre kind of took some of it, um, in which it's okay to say you're you're wrong in, uh, in things and in topics and in, in discussions. And it's okay to say, I'm sorry. You know, um, as, as a man, uh, it's vitally important, especially if it was touched on for us to listen. Um, and not just that, not just listen to listen, but to actively listen to what is actually being said. Cause sometimes a woman may want to tell you something, but you're not really hearing what's actually in between the lines. So it's important to really listen for what's happening within that time, as well as I'm a huge advocate of, of mental health and therapy. And as a black man, um, we need a lot of therapy because we come from a long line of brokenness. And at times we, we need to break generational curses and to lift things off of our, ourselves that would impact our families and our futures and our generations and generations on. And I believe we can take the initiative to actually have therapy and have Jesus at the same time, we can cause some serious change and a huge ripple effect, um, not only in our lives, but in the lives of our women and our children around us. Um, but I think that this conversation, we should just continue to keep having, especially amongst men, uh, because we have a lot to learn. We don't know everything, but we sure we certainly can learn. Wow. Um, gentlemen, I want to first say thank you. And this is a closing comment that I think is powerful. Um, at Diana Sand says, that's crazy that these men can hear um, what we are talking about, it seems, that from their own boys, but can't listen to the person they procreate with. That doesn't even sound right. For so long, we've given priority to the men around us about all issues, right? Issues that um, have been fallible at their core, but we haven't taken time to listen to those, the women that support us, that um, give us life, right? And, and provide life to us. I think it's time we stop that narrative, right? We need to change the stories that are being told about black men and black women. Um, I am a big proponent of the mental health aspect. Um, I am a therapist for a reason. I think, gentlemen, we need to break down toxic masculinity. We need to really in, be empowered as men with feelings because men with feelings can't help 
but feel empathetically for a black woman. You can't help but look at them. And once you hear just some of their story, feel moved to be like, I'm, I am wrong, as Avery said. I, I have done wrong. I have been wrong at times. I would like to do better. Gentlemen, I, I challenge us. Much like white allies must be to black racist thought, I challenge us to make sure that we are the biggest allies for our black women. We need to disrupt spaces where men are speaking on black women in particular in ways that are not edifying, uplifting, and empowering. Um, we wanted to just take a brief pause in our series on black women, right? Supporting black women to have this conversation as men. We need to carry this forward. You all said it, right? So each one of us now have been put on, put out there, right? Our faces are out there. We have this platform to say we're going to carry this conversation forward. We are going to be disruptors of this space. I know next week we're looking to carry the conversation forward um, in, in our understanding of Black women in the community. We want to talk about things like colorism. We want to talk about things like roles. We really want to make sure that we understand right what it means to be a Black woman in this community, in this society. And we want to make sure to do differently going forward. Also, I want to shout out um, to anyone who wants to support Flow Ministries. I got a dope. Uh, Africana Print Flow Black Lives Matter t-shirt. If you're interested, please, 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 please email to flowpresents at gmail.com. Again, that is to flowpresents at gmail.com. We'll get you a t-shirt. All the money is going to go to supporting the ministry going forward. Um, also, if you're interested in doing in any outreach ministries, Flow will actually be in the community, I believe, um, next week and possibly the week after doing some God work. God work is good work, people. Uh, so make sure you're aware, stay connected, stay plugged in, subscribe, comment, like, and share. And to all the women out there, um, I hear you. I see you. We want to do better. And I, I believe I said that on behalf of these men, um, these men here who've taken the time to be a part of this conversation. So we ask that you guys have a wonderful day. We look forward to seeing you next week at 4.30, same place, same time. Um, we love y'all.